Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach as a place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411. Is this part four of Anna? I think it's three of Anna, but four because we had the bonus last week. We did. Her coming to Port Charles. No, it is four because Port Charles, all my children. Then we did another oh, Port Charles. Okay. That's three, but then the bonus. <laughs> we don't know where we're at, but that's so okay. So this is our fifth week focusing on Anna's life-ish, even though we didn't really even talk about all my children that much with Vincent. Right. Irizari, so. I don't know. I don't know. It's been a fun month. That's all that matters. But it'll be done next week, and I don't know. <laughs> Amanda came up with a great idea for Nostalgia November. I just feel like it fits, and that throws us into Robin's Diary. Yep. So, so we're going to try to figure that one out, and we have a couple other interviews lined up with some former castmates. Yay. So get a little bit more nostalgic. So today we are going to be reading from just straight Wikipedia because we like it better today. And we're covering we're covering from 2012 through, what was it, 2006? 16. yeah. Not six, Not six. that's backwards. 2016. Yep. <laughs> All right, so. Do you want me to start? You want to start? I'm going to start. Okay. I'm going to do it off my phone just because your computer is so far away. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I even just zoomed in I know, for you, but I still I feel like I'm going to be like, Okay. I'm blind. We've had this That's discussion why I zoom. many times. You still need to zoom like a thousand times. I am blind. So Anna returns to town in February 2012, shortly before Robin is killed in a hospital lab explosion. And she actually showed up on Valentine's Day that year because it was a surprise from Emma and Patrick. And they had a cute little row of Hershey kisses leading to the door, Aww. a little trail. And whenever she opened up the door, then Anna was standing there. So it was cute. I hope she didn't have to stand out there for very long. I hope not either. It was cute because she kept talking and finally Emma was like, mommy, just open the door. And so she came in and that was all exciting. Their little reunion. Anna delivers the sad news to Mac and tries to contact Robert. So Jason was having those crazy headaches then. And Robin needed mm. to find the cure for it. Okay. And... Maxie had been in the lab and accidentally pulled the handle thing for the gas. And so. Did she leave her Bunsen burner on? Yes. I was always exactly. worried about that right? in chemistry. It is You're going to blow up the school. Apparently it's very serious for real because well, yeah. you blew up the lab. So Patrick got stuck in there. Robin went and saved him. And then she ran back in, even though she knew the doors could lock her in to get the antidote for Jason. She would do anything for him. She really would. I think I would have been more angry that she died than Patrick was. Like, Patrick was mad at Jason. I think I would have been more angry with her for going back in. Yeah. So. Well, it's hard to be mad at someone who died. Well, see, I feel like that's easier because then they can't argue back with you. Yeah, but. You can have the whole conversation in your head, which you know I love to do. So that's easier. True, true. She sends Luke after Robert who storms off after viewing Robin's remains in the morgue. Anna wouldn't go into the morgue to see the remains because they said they were burned beyond recognition, mm. but Robert felt like he needed to see them. You didn't actually see the remains, thank God. But whenever Anna went to get him to leave the morgue, there was just a text message that he sent that said, I can't do this, and he was gone. Mm. When Robert returns, he tells Anna that Luke told him he is the father of Holly's son, Ethan Lovett, who we saw a couple weeks ago. I love Ethan. Yep. Who had been kidnapped by Helena Cassadine. Robert doesn't want to lose another child, so he decides to find Ethan and leaves Anna behind, going before Robin's funeral, not knowing that Luke and Holly lied to him in order to give him a reason to live. And if I was Anna, I would have been beyond livid. You're going to leave me to handle my kid's funeral right. while you go chasing after this other kid that you don't even know? Mm -mm. And it winds up not actually being... But he didn't know that at the time. Right. The point is that if you hadn't known for all these years, you can wait another three days while we get through this funeral. But whatever. Robert did his thing. But he was kidnapped. But mm -hmm. he might not have had three days. I don't know. I still, I'm selfish. Kid's funeral, you need to be there with me. I agree. After Robert leaves, Luke looks after Anna. 
Their friendship grows, and Luke asks Anna to move in with him, much to the jealousy of Luke's ex-wife, Tracy Quartermain, at his suite in the Metro Court Hotel. Anna agrees, as she doesn't want to be alone. I did not like them together. No, it was weird. It was just super weird. Then in April 2012, Anna is visited by John McBain, (laughs) a former protege of hers from the FBI. John asks Anna for help in taking down local mob boss Sonny Corinthos, whom John believes to be responsible for the deaths of Cole Thornhart, Hope Manning Thornhart, Robin, and John's sister, Teresa. It was revealed that it was actually Joe Scully Jr. who killed Teresa, framing Sonny and making Robin's kidnapping occur. Anna is offered the job as Port Charles Police Department's... Wow! Port (laughs) Charles Police Department Police Commissioner... She is effective at her work, able to locate the body of Anthony Zakara, Tracy's husband, who went missing. That was another weird storyline. It was. They just did not fit together. No. At all. And I know it wasn't supposed to be a marriage about love, but even just watching the scenes, I was like, what are you doing? Like, Get who came away up with this her. idea? Yeah. Meanwhile, Anna became, becomes the new target of Heather Weber's obsessive behavior due to Anna's involvement with Luke Spencer. Luke is kidnapped by Heather, but found by Anna just as the cabin in which he is being held goes up in flames. Heather accidentally shoots Luke as she attempts to shoot Anna and is arrested. Anna later finds out that Olivia Falconeri, who is Heather's son's, Steve's girlfriend, (laughs) and the mother of PCPD detective Dante was hurt by Heather on the order of Sonny's enemy, Cesar Faison. That was the LSD stuff. Yeah. When Heather is brought to the police station, Anna questions her and Heather claims that Robin is alive. Heather says she saw Robin at Ferncliff Sanitarium. Anna goes to Ferncliff, but Robin isn't there. However, she finds a pamphlet to a clinic in Switzerland and decides to go there to get answers. On a pamphlet? I mean, any excuse. Those to places go to have Switzerland. a lot of pamphlets, though. They do. They have, typically have a wall mm-hmm. of pamphlets of all the other different so just, facilities and services. But we'll just pick up this one for Switzerland and go ahead. That works. It would work for me. If that could get me a trip to Switzerland, I might be like, okay, here we go. There you go. In Switzerland, Anna pretends to be a patient in order to snoop around the clinic. Luke later arrives to help her search, but they cannot find Robin and return home. He later tells Anna about the lie he told Robert, and she isn't able to forgive him. I feel like there were so many other things wrong with that relationship besides that lie, though. It was time for them to be done. Yeah. Anna's presumed deceased ex-husband, Duke Lavery, shows up and wants to get back together. He is able to convince Anna that it is really him, and they grow close. Later, Faison, who is obsessed with Anna, shows up, and it is discovered that he has been wearing a mask so that he can act and look like Duke. Faison pretends to be Duke for a time. She begins to not only believe that he is Duke, but that Duke is falling madly in love with her all over again. Just when she thinks she, too, is falling back in love, she begins to question the true identity of Duke slash Faison. That was a weird storyline, too. He just, like, ripped that mask mm-hmm. off whenever he was home or in his own apartment, penthouse, wherever he stayed. I don't know. It was probably the hotel. Did he have a house? I don't think he did. So his hotel I don't room, know. he would rip his mask off, and that was just freaky. As Faison realizes Anna is close to figuring out his true identity, he takes her away to Switzerland. Robert tracks Anna down and reveals Duke is Faison. Next, Anna and Robert find and free the real Duke. Robert also comes upon Robin, but is drugged by Dr. Obrecht, which sends him into a long-term coma. In the hospital, I don't know that it is the same, because we just watched all the ch- My Children stuff. The hospital looks like the same hospital that they mm. did all the Anna scenes in. It just, like, caught my eye as I was watching it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Anna and the real Duke return to Port Charles. Robin continues to be held prisoner by Obrecht, and Faison is imprisoned until Obrecht later frees him. The real Duke Lavery lays wait low that that. The real Duke lays low for a while, but tells Anna he still loves her with all his heart and soul. Luke also wants her back, but she finally decides to rekindle her relationship with Duke. Which who didn't know that was how it right. was gonna go? Right. Eventually Robert regains consciousness and remembers seeing Robin. He and Anna set up to locate their daughter, finding her on Cassadine Island in Greece. They're unable to free Robin and are themselves trapped on Cassadine Island while Robin is transported back to Port Charles. She is then hidden there on Spoon Island with Faison and Obrecht. I wonder how they got the name Spoon Island. Mm-hmm. We need to look into that. Okay. Following the instructions to conduct research in order to keep her parents from being killed, Robert and Anna eventually escape and free Robin. 
Anna is now able to enjoy a reunion with her daughter, continued friendship with Robert, and rekindled romance with Duke. Isn't that when they killed Faison by locking him in the catacombs? Like, they locked... I think so. Yeah. Because that's never been mentioned in any of this stuff. He's been killed so many times, I can't... Let's just keep him killed. Okay. Oh, no, it wouldn't have been, because then he came back and killed Nathan. Right. Well, that's what I mean. It was one of the many times I I was quoting... When I say right. killed. But I feel like no, no matter, they can't see them. No matter hurting. who you talk about, it's an air quote killed on the soaps because yeah. they can always come. Yeah. Eventually, Duke becomes entangled once again with the mob in Port Charles. This is partially sparked by the return of Julian Jerome and his mob connections. Duke Duke allies with Sonny Corinthos in order to oppose Julian. His active mob involvement gradu- gradually alienates him from Anna, who pleads with him to refrain from criminal activities as long as she is the police commissioner. Ultimately, the relationship breaks up. No more tangos for them. No. This happens just at the same time that it is discovered that Faison has resurfaced in Port Charles, like I just said, having escaped his imprisonment by Robert and Anna. Ignore everything (laughs) I just said. Anna is in hot water with the Justice Department as she and Robert took the law into their own hands by imprisoning Faison privately. Oh no, here's some more tangos. Duke and Anna reconcile in 2015 and agree to go away together, but he is fatally shot on the docks the same night. Anna is once again devastated. She becomes obsessed with seeking revenge against Carlos Rivero, Rivera, sorry, eventually holding him at gunpoint with the intent to arrest him for the murder of Duke under orders from Julian. Carlos taunts her that he will walk if he is tried. Anna is tormented to the point where she blasts him four times in the chest. Carlos was wearing a bulletproof vest with blood squibs in order to fake his death so he could get away with murder. And that was how Robin had come back. Not that this is about Robin, but the whole wedding to Sabrina and all that Mm -hmm. stuff. So there was a gazillion clips of all of the stuff that happened around the wedding and stuff. Was that that the rabbit hole? That was was fun So I'm not sure if you could pick it up, but Amanda watched YouTube and I did not. I did watch (laughs) YouTube, but I don't feel like I watched as much as I could have because I remember most Mm -hmm. of it somewhat. But on top of that, when Robin died was a rabbit was a rabbit hole because of watching everyone's reaction and all that. Right. And then whenever she came back, that was just amazing because poor Sabrina. We love uh. Sabrina. Her heart was broken. Yeah. Um, since his death, Anna has frequent hallucinations of Carlos, taunting her about how she's supposed to be upholding the law, but then turns around and violates the law herself. So she decides to talk to Dr. Kevin Collins, which I love that someone actually sought out a psychiatrist when they needed it. Quickly. Like, she didn't wait to go completely insane. Can you help me? Kevin writes a prescription for a low dose of anti-anxiety medication, but her visions continue. Anna slips into the morgue to see Carlos's body, but Jordan catches her. Anna pleads with Jordan for help, so Jordan opens the drawer containing Carlos's body, finding it empty. They discover the body was cremated. But a review of the examiner's report raises red flags because photos were missing and some information was incorrect. According to the report, Carlos was shot twice, but Anna recalls firing at him four times. She realizes the records were falsified or the body that was recovered wasn't Carlos's. Anna suspects Paul is behind the cover-up and confronts him. He advises her to drop it. She refuses and continues to push until Paul reveals that he knows she shot Carlos because Kyle had provided him with proof of it. Paul assures her that he took steps to keep her secret buried and promises Kyle won't be a problem since he could be charged as an accomplice. I cannot remember this Kyle guy. He was like another detective. I like totally enjoyed the Paul Hornsby was the DA. I totally know Paul because I can't stand him, but I cannot. And wasn't Kyle a detective? I think he was. I'm pretty sure that he was because that's the only way it makes sense, but it kills me. Normally... You at least have some recollection of who it is. Mm -hmm. I I cannot remember this guy at all. Meanwhile, Kevin reaches out to a colleague to take Anna's case. He feels she needs someone to be more objective. He introduces her to Dr. Andre Maddox. The sessions start off rocky, but Anna eventually grew to trust Andre. Anna returns to see Andre and confesses she killed Carlos. She admits that one other person knows, and he's been holding it over her head. Andre promises to keep her confidence. Anna decides to bide her time with Paul until she can turn the tables on him. Paul continues to be a thorn in Anna's side. Tensions mount between Paul and Anna when she takes on a cold case, the shooting of Sonny Corinthos at a warehouse while he'd been rescuing TJ Ashford. You know, the first time he was kidnapped. <laughs> by a mobster. Paul wants Anna to drop the investigation and resorts to blackmail to force her to comply. 
Things take an unexpected turn when Anna spots Carlos at the piers. He manages to evade her, but she has proof that he was alive because he dropped the necklace with Carlos and Sabrina engraved on it. I always, I liked their love story because like they were young sweethearts and just went on different paths. I liked their love story, but I didn't want them back together. No. I felt like she had grown a lot from that relationship. I know. Sorry, she could have sad. fixed him. No, <laughs> no, I know that's. The, she tried. Let's it did not work. Sure she moved on. Understands. No, that's not the actually what you mean. Them. Yeah, <laughs> there's air quotes around that. Too. Yes. Do you want me to go? Yeah. Max Scorpio catches Anna breaking into Kyle's apartment. She tells him she suspects Kyle was in the cahoots with Carlos and theorizes Kyle set things up to make it appear she killed Carlos. Mac wonders whose body was recovered from the harbor as he and Anna look around Kyle's abandoned apartment. Anna finds a slip of paper with a familiar phone number and calls it. She is shocked when Paul answers. Mm. Which I don't feel like she should be shocked because she knew that he was shady. Right. It would help more if I remembered Kyle, but I don't. Anna suspects Paul killed Kyle and passed his body off as Carlos's, but she has no proof. She is briefly sidetracked from her investigation when she and Robert join forces to rescue Robin again from the clutches of Jerry Jacks and Helena Cassidyne on Cassidyne Island. Anna decides to hunt down Carlos to prove her theory, so she and Jordan pay Sabrina a visit. It is clear Sabrina has gone on the run with Carlos, prompting Anna to reach out to Robert for help. They quickly pick up Carlos and Sabrina's trail in Halifax, Nova Scotia. However, Paul arranges for Anna and Robert to be detained to buy Carlos and Sabrina time to disappear. Anna and Robert race to the cabin they suspect Carlos and Sabrina were in, but the couple manage to get away. Anna returns to Port Charles and redoubles her efforts to investigate Paul. She's very busy. Do you want to know why you don't remember Kyle? Yes, please. Do you remember Sloan? Yeah. Guess what his first name is? Oh, okay. That makes total sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Kyle Sloan. Yeah. Bye. He was always called Sloan. Right. Okay. Now I don't feel as crazy. Jordan eventually collects enough evidence against Paul to arrest him. Anna begs Jordan to hold off as Anna needs more time to capture Carlos. She's determined to send Duke's killer to jail, but she can't take down Julian without Carlos's testimony. Jordan reluctantly agrees. I feel like Jordan is very easily convinced to not do her job. Yeah. And she's been in charge for a really long time. Yeah. I don't think I realized it. It's Neither did I. Like, I started to really think about this, and I'm like, ah. Apparently, she's not very good at her job because she keeps just taking information oh, from well, whoever. Oh, well, you say that. Okay, I guess I'll just wait. <laughs> exactly. Keep in mind, we like Jordan. Just when you start you to read like this someone stuff. someone and not think they do their job very well. Yes. So. But when you start to read this stuff, and it, like, really pieces together to, like, a time that you're in right now, too. It's right. Like, Wait, why are we doing this again with you? <laughs> Anna's life takes an unexpected turn when a young man appears on her doorstep, claiming to be Duke Lavery's long-lost son. Griffin willingly t- takes a DNA test, which confirms that he is Duke's son. Anna and Griffin bond instantly as she tells him about the man he never met. I love Griffin, too. He and Duke would have been so good. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Maybe they could have come up with a new nurse's ball number, two, other than the tangle. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I just, I can't stand that act so well, much. we don't have to worry about it anymore. Good. Anna fills in Sunny about Paul's connection to Carlos. She is certain Carlos decided to remain hidden instead of cutting a deal. Sunny offers to tap Paul's phone. She can't support the plan, but she also wants justice for Duke. A few days later, Sunny tells Anna that he has a lead on Carlos's location. He provides her with the jump drive. <laughs> AKA flash drive, AKA thumb drive, AKA Sunny loves jump drives of Paul's conversation, but he asks her to retrieve a tracking device from Paul's phone. I need to let my husband know that this is not Sunny's first go around with right, flash drives. Right. He may want to watch this. Check it out. Yep. I like how they say she couldn't support the plan, but just go ahead and do what you're going to do. And then we'll use that information. They do that often. Mm-hmm. Anna bumps into Paul at the hospital and persuades him to let her use his phone to call Robin. She feigns a poor connection, ducks around a corner, and removes the tracking device. Later, Paul arrives at Anna's house to stop her from going to Ecuador with Sunny to capture Carlos. He tries to arrest her, but she chloroforms him, cuffs him to her staircase, and leaves. 
I wonder how many people just have chloroform laying around their house. I don't even know how you buy it. I don't know either. I can't say that I've ever seen it at a you store. You probably shouldn't search I, it. I was just going to say, I'm like, and I'm not going to Google this one. <laughs> when the police are at your house next week, we'll know why. Please don't look it up. How to buy chloroform. <laughs> Paul calls Anna as she waited in Ecuador on Sonny's private jet for Sonny to return with Carlos. She realizes Paul hoped Sonny would kill Carlos. If that happened, Paul would charge her and Sonny with murder when they returned. She accuses Paul of trying to save his own skin because Carlos knew Paul had killed Kyle. Sonny finds Carlos in a church dressed as a priest. After a brief standoff, Anna bursts into the church to stop Sonny from killing Carlos. Carlos takes advantage of the distraction and lunges at Sonny. A brief struggle ensues, followed by a gunshot. Carlos is hit in the shoulder. Anna handcuffs him, and they all board Sonny's jet back to Port Charles. I don't know if Paul could have really convicted her of anything anyway, though. If it happened in Ecuador, you don't have any jurisdiction there. I have no idea. In the interrogation room, Anna tells Jordan that she's been set up to make it look like she killed Carlos. Paul argues that Anna has no proof, but she reminds him that he confessed to her that he killed Kyle to avenge Susan. Jordan arrests both Paul and Anna. Anna admits that she's ready to face the consequences of her actions. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody takes the consequences. Paul blurts out that she he is in love with Anna, but she scoffs at that. After Mayor Lomax secures Paul's release, Paul informs Anna that she won't be granted bail because he has concerns about her mental well-being. He says Anna's compulsion to mete out punishment for perceived wrongdoings borders on irrational. So he wants an expert to determine her mental stability. She is stunned when Andre sides with Paul. Anna accuses Andre of playing into Paul's hands. When Paul returns, Andre tells him he can't evaluate her because it would be a conflict of interest. At Anna's hearing, she enters a plea of not guilty. Paul proceeds a report from a psychiatrist deeming her unfit to be released but he decides to testify on Anna's behalf, so she will be granted bail. Later, a witness named Hale steps forward and makes a statement that he saw Carlos murder Duke. However, Hale is found dead from a drug overdose days later. Ooh, ooh, I wonder if that would tie in with Cyrus right that now. That would be fun. Ooh. Anna suspects Julian is behind the witness's death. Ooh. No, because we don't want Julian no. back in the drug game. No. 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 We don't need him having prior ties to Cyrus right, right. now. No. Carlos escapes while being transported to prison. Anna is certain that Paul had a hand in the staging of the escape. She joins the manhunt and finds Carlos at the pier. Why do people go hide there? I don't know. The she same reason they have conversations that are not really private there. Right. She tries to arrest him, but he manages to overpower her and knocks the gun out of her hand. He throws her into the meat locker and flees. Trapped and injured, she has another vision of Duke. Duke begs Anna not to waste her life seeking justice for him. He wants her to focus on the time that they had had together rather than trying to change something that couldn't be undone. Duke. Poor Duke. Not really there. It's just a hallucination. So luckily for Anna, Andre finds her before she succumbs to hypothermia. At the hospital, Anna and Andre are shocked when paramedics rush past them with an unconscious Carlos on the gurney. Weak and gravely injured, Carlos begs to see a priest. Everyone is shocked when Griffin reveals that he is a Catholic priest on <gasps> sabbatical. Yes, good reaction. I think that's what <laughs> everyone at GH did at that moment. He administers last rites and hears Carlos's confession. After his death, Sabrina returns to Port Charles and agrees to cooperate with the police. She tells Anna that Carlos said nothing about Julian, but Carlos was in contact with a mystery person. Ooh. Anna continues to build her case against Julian for Carlos's murder. The dagger that killed Carlos is found at Julian and Alexis's home. The blade was wiped clean, but there's blood between the handle and the blade. A DNA test confirms the blood belongs to Carlos. Good job not having that switched with someone else's, because mm-hmm. that happened a lot back then, especially. Anna flies to California to spend a few weeks with Robin. Shortly after she returns home, Paul is revealed to be a serial killer who arranged for Julian to be acquitted of all the crimes with which he was charged. Paul confesses and is sent to Pentonville for life. Anna feels she hasn't done enough to keep Julian off the streets. Anna contacts Robert and tells him that she would like to resume her work for the WSB. It was agreed Anna's home base would be Port Charles. A short time later, Griffin introduces his (laughs) ex-lover, Claudette. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please listen to <laughs> because Monday's it's like, episode. You're just like, why did Shannon say lover? Like lover. Oh, oh, it's that again here. What is? And her young daughter, daughter Charlotte, to Anna. 
Claudette needs help to protect herself from another ex-lover, Valentin Cassadine. A DNA test reveals that Valentin Cassadine is Charlotte's father. After Claudette vanishes in Canada, Anna pays Valentin a visit. She senses something familiar about the black sheep Cassadine, but he denies having ever met her. She is determined to help Griffin get custody of Charlotte because Valentin was the prime suspect in Claudette's disappearance. During a lull in the custody hearing, Valentin whispers a Latin phrase that leaves Anna shaken. Translated, the phrase was, open your eyes, and it is the motto for WSB Training Academy. Ooh. Robert informs Anna that there is no record of Valentin working for the WSB, so she pays Valentin a quick vis- a visit to qu- so she pays Valentin a visit to question him about the motto. Valentin plays innocent and claims that he had been referring to Shakespeare's play Richard III. Meanwhile, Andre recognizes Valentin, but knows him by the name of Theo Hart, the head of an international diamond theft ring operating out of the Ukraine. Theo had vanished before he could be apprehended. When a picture of Anna, taken during her days at the WSB Training Academy, is discovered by Emma in Valentin's possession, Anna reaches out to Andre. Anna hopes that hypnosis therapy will help her figure out why Valentin seems so familiar. Under hypnosis, Anna recalls seeing a door at the end of a hallway with a beam of light shining from underneath. She also has a vivid memory of hearing someone whispering a tune. Anna's final memory was a dropping of a watch she'd been winding, which was stopped at 11.05 on October 29th, her birthday. Mm-hmm. Anna confronts Valentine, who concedes that he was in her room at the academy. However, he refuses to elaborate. During another encounter with Valentine, he reminds Anna that not every sinner paid for their crimes, adding that she knew the truth better than anyone. Anna has a flashback to her birthday entering her room at the training academy and finding Valentine waiting. She recalls him saying, I have waited so long for this. I feel like the word lover should be on that yeah. one. <laughs> Anna recoils in horror. No, stop, she recalls saying to the disfigured young man. Anna sees Griffin storm out onto the balcony to confront Valentine after learning of Claudette's death. Valentine brutally beats Griffin until Anna and Andre intercede. Anna accuses Valentine of being a vicious thug and slaps him. Valentine is stunned and begins to stutter. Mortified, he flees. Dun, dun, dun. And then we have to stop because we're going to get into the last couple years if we don't. Yeah. So next week we will finish up Anna from... That's also a lot of hate between her and Valentine that they're trying to put behind them now Mm -hmm. again i know it's been a running storyline but once you see the dates you're like oh wow this is that was really been a while Mm -hmm. well like it's already been over a month since max died since mike died (laughs) like who's max played by max scale (laughs) yeah i knew what you meant but it doesn't feel like no it doesn't over a month it It was that's because gh life moves as slowly as my real life sometimes it feels like yeah i don't know but I liked all that action that Anna was in mm-hmm. then. She's so boring now. They need to give her something. Well, they're working on it. I hope so. Let's hope. They're going to double up because then we'll get to see her and Alex. Exactly. She'll be fighting with herself. How much better can it get? There you go. Who better to fight Anna than Alex? See, that's why no one's a match for her except for herself. There you go. It's like on The that. Office when Dwight could be oh the only substitute for Dwight. I do not watch that show and all you people who love it the like best to reference assistant. it all the time and I don't know what you're talking about. There's this part where Dwight has to pick an assistant for himself and he picks Jim and Jim's like, I don't know if I can do it. And so he has like all these tasks and it winds up being that the only suitable assistant to Dwight would be Dwight. Sounds hysterical. Yes. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. It was funny. Okay. Anyway, so join us on Monday as we recap General Hospital, not the office. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> Have a good weekend. And we'll meet at the pier. <laughs> you know, we'll meet you at that place. We'll meet you at the pier. <laughs> Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 